live from New York. Extracting the signal from the noise, it's The Cube. Covering Rapid Miner Wisdom 2016. Brought to you by Rapid Miner. Now, your hosts, Dave Vellante and Jeff Frick. Welcome back to New York City, everybody. We're here at Rapid Miner Wisdom 16 in the heart of uh, the Big Apple. This is theCUBE, and it's our pleasure to have Lars Boyla here. He's the Chief Product Officer of Rapid Miner. Lars, welcome to theCUBE. Uh, thanks, yeah, Dave, it's nice to be here, and uh, I'm looking forward to talking a little bit about Rapid Miner. Version seven's announced. Just yes, about the yes, ship. we you just. You guys are uh, excited. Uh, very much Give so. Us the we, yeah, yeah, we just um, announced it today then, and uh, the product will be available in a few days for download. Uh, and the version seven has a number of really interesting features that we've added to it. Uh, uh, you know, all, all kinds of stuff from... Uh, what are your favorites? Yeah, my favorites are actually, if you look structure a little bit here, we, we think a lot about the uh, users themselves and, and really trying to address uh, a broader audience than we have in, in the past. Uh, this field is so focused on the data scientists, but we're also seeing a budding uh, group of users, the more advanced business analysts, or sometimes they're referred to as citizen data scientists. and. We have really built this release to uh, address those users. In fact, we've added three things in the product here that really target them. Uh, the first thing we've done is uh, overhaul the look and feel of the product, make it look a little bit more modern, also simplify the interface. Uh, we've taken a lot of more advanced functions and put them in other places so that the power is still there for the experienced and, and uh, powerful uh, data scientist or user, but also making it really simple for the starting uh, user or the less technical type of user. So that was uh, one of the key things, and so starting out with that. And then the second thing we did is we've completely overhauled our uh, learning experience and how you get started with the product. Uh, so we've introduced uh, a new getting started where people can learn the initial steps of how to get started with the product and, and use the basic mechanics of it. And then we've added a, a really nice set of tutorials. This is actually one of my favorite parts of this new release, uh, uh, because uh, it goes through uh, how to use the product, starts out with some very basic uh, elements of how to get your data, how to start to clean it up and apply some of the modeling techniques, uh, and then it progresses. You can learn more about uh, those particular techniques, dig deeper into some of the more advanced functionality. And lastly, there's a third, there's really three sets of these uh, tutorials. And the last one digs into more of the validation, like how can you make sure that your models that you're producing are good? Uh, and then also how do you start to move them into deployment and actually use them within the business? So this piece will take a lot of new users up the ramp pretty quickly and get started and productive with the product. So a lot in there, uh, um, yeah. major, major release. Talk about the architecture. Help us sort of conceptualize it, if you will, and where yeah. it's come from. And, and oh, okay, sure. You know, yeah, we have, um, yeah, the, at, at the core, it's a, really a, a desktop tool in a sense. Uh, we have a, a, what we call the Rapid Money Studio, which is the productivity tool for everybody to use, or the workbench, you can think of it, where they can uh, get their data, clean it up, develop models, and, and do the work there. So that's the base client of the software. And then we have a server piece too, where you can then uh, push down your processes and, and, and run them there on bigger data, schedule those types of jobs, run them on a regular basis and so on. Th there you can also uh, facilitate a good bit of collaboration. You can have multiple users use the servers, share routines, uh, share results and so on. And then lastly, uh, that piece also allows you to deploy into other systems. So the server itself then can uh, integrate with business systems like salesforce.com and you can uh, push in your results. Let's say you do a churn model and you want to score your customers on their propensity to churn or not. You can fully automate that and have the rapid miner server then write the resulting data into salesforce.com on a regular basis. So now you have the client and the server technology allowing clients here to model and build things up, then run on a big data and deploy through the server. And that, that client server architecture has basically been there since day one, is that uh, right? It has, yeah, it has been there since uh, day one. Well, I, I, to be, yeah, the full story is really that we started out mainly with the client piece, actually. Mm -hmm. The server came a little bit later, 
uh, as uh, people needed to run bigger jobs, there were groups of people working, and really when we got into more of the automation and the deployment pieces, so that, that's when that was added. Okay. And then uh, just uh, you know, a year and a half or so ago, we also added uh, a cloud component to this. So just like you can run the server internally to do all these uh, processing things, uh, we also can let you use the cloud. So if you're a user with the client, or the pro studio professional as we call it, you can take the processes you've been building and upload them into the cloud and run them there. So you get all the power of, uh, let's say, in Amazon there and, and, and run big jobs uh, on the data without necessarily having to procure and install a server on-premise. And it's pick your cloud, or do you have? Uh, actually, we run it all. Uh, we are the front end there. And in fact, we run it on the Amazon cloud, uh, and that's where these things get spawned up and run. But we put a front end to it all, so you really work straight from the client. It's very integrated into the product, actually. So you're in the marketplace, is that right? Yeah, yeah we're not actually in the marketplace. So we. So it's bring your own. Yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. So we, we well, we run our whole cloud infrastructure really more on, OEM. Um, exactly, yeah. So yeah. we run it oh, okay. on their so you, stuff. okay, so you provide there. a solution. Uh, it's it's it, kind it, of powered it, by Amazon that, that in the background. Exactly, Amazon. it's powered by the Amazon in the background, and right, then right. we provide the, yeah, the front end to it all. So your channel will essentially sell that solution that includes the uh, exactly, AWS exactly. Yeah, capability, yeah. all ready to go. And all ready to go. Mm -hmm. All you need to do is actually get the client, and, and from there you can immediately, when you create your thing, say, hey, I want to run it in the cloud then that integrates immediately with the cloud and can upload and run it there. Yeah. How do you expect version seven to, can you talk about, it, we hear a lot about the, the citizen data scientist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great marketing term. How do you expect, take us through how version seven will perpetuate that citizen yeah, data Yeah, yeah, great, scientist. great question. Yeah, so, uh, just the way you can start out with the product now. It's so easy to get it in the first place. You come to our website, download it. We offer open source software as well, so people can start free for free, mm -hmm. right? So that will get them uh, the software, and then immediately we take them through with these new features. Hey, here's the first steps to get started. Do the tutorial. And then, in fact, I didn't mention that yet, but we also have these templates Let's say you're into market basket analysis or you want to do some pre preventive maintenance. We already have pre-built example processes for that and how you would do it. So people can quickly pick those up as well. So if you're not a deep data scientist, but a business uh, analyst in some area, maybe you've used some data visualizations tools for a while and a lot of Excel and you want to get a little bit deeper into the data, right? You can pick it up now and I think these new features will really lead the users well away on their way to learn and pick up and try to apply this on their own. Yeah. So what kind of feedback do you get um, from customers when you talk about that concept? Um, and, and how well do you feel like version seven is going to nail that? Yeah, feedback? yeah. Uh, uh, we, we get a lot of good feedback actually from this. We have um, also performed a number of usability studies uh, with uh, users that have never experienced Rapid Miner before, and we can see a clear improvement in how it easy it is to absorb this new version compared to before. Uh, and also in talking to customers, uh, yeah, there's a great need to have more people be able to do this. So they're very receptive and interested in the possibility to have a broader number of people within their organization being able to um, do predictive analytics. So, yeah. do you find that there's a particular function or a particular vertical or a particular type of analysis that lends itself to kind of the starter uh, kit uh, data, it, it, the it, citizen uh, yeah, data analyst? Yeah, where yeah, where exactly. does it get started? Who, the, who are the guys that have some yeah, success? Uh, actually, a lot of pull from the marketing area of companies. Yeah, so marketing departments uh, are sort of the ones that seem to be doing the most of this today. Uh, when we're out talking to customers and, and where this uh, interest is coming from very strongly, it's in this area. I think those departments have traditionally been you know, underserved or either supported by some very advanced people, but they do have some talented analysts within themselves and they, there's so much to be done there. Right. There's so, you know, a lot of uh, great rewards to be reaped if you can do this. So that's a big pull we see, and I think that's a good place to start. We'll find those type of users there. A another area where we see it too, it's more general, is actually 
from the BI user community or the people that support BI systems. You have these experts or power users of Tableau or ClickTech, and many of them are looking for more advanced functionality. They want to go deeper into the data, validate maybe some of the visual trends and things they're seeing in the data, but now how do I know if it's really something, I, a trend I can trust or, 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 or so, right? So they want to apply more of this type of statistics and modeling to figure those out. So that's a more general and broad audience which are part of this citizen data scientist right. group, right? So I would say those two pockets is where we see a lot of uh, interest and, and traction here. Um, How about roadmap? Let's yeah. sort of end there. What, uh, what can we look forward to over the next 12, 18, 24? Yeah, 20? yeah, we have lots of nice stuff coming along too, actually. So we're going to continue on this uh, ease of use uh, path that we just started with Seven. So definitely uh, continue to improve the usability. The other couple of main areas are in with big data. So we've already done a lot of work uh, with Hadoop systems and being able to uh, run predictive analytics on or in Hadoop. And there we're doing some really cool stuff actually. Uh, moving uh, to a place where people can run a lot of the functionality we have in the product today right inside the Hadoop stack. So that will open up a lot of new use cases that were before not possible. You know, there's lots of uh, systems on top of Hadoop coming along, like Spark for example, everybody's using that. That has a set of machine learning libraries and so on, but it's still a limited set of capability. What we will do now is allow you to push down all of RapidMiner into the Hadoop stack, and you can run all 1,500 operations and, uh, that we can support today. So, so that will open it up Just hugely. follow up on yeah. that. So you said, you, you, I, think, I think I heard you say Spark, new, yeah. new innovation, okay, and, but you said somewhat limited. And, and you see sort of two camps, those who have built up Hadoop infrastructure yep. and have the skill sets to um, you know, bring real time into that Hadoop infrastructure. And then there's the other camp, I'm simplifying obviously, that has never had that, that skill set, yeah. right? not so much, and looks at Spark as a way to simplify you know, some of that. Yeah, Hadoop no, you're right, Dave. It's, uh, uh, the people that have the technical skill set and can code and go deep in and do whatever they want to almost mm. in those systems, right? But then uh, you have a lot of people that don't have that skill set. They're still analysts. They're even uh, PhDs in statistics, but they might not have had the time and, and, and effort to learn this stuff. So now they can use Rapid Miner with a completely graphical interface to actually do this stuff, right? We will support all of this mm. with the graphical interface. You can drag and drop all these operators together and actually push it down in there without any coding, you know. So that we uh, are, are putting some big money on to, to build out over the next year. And then the third piece is around the cloud. So we've uh, just discussed that a little bit, how we can push down processing in the cloud today. Uh, but what, what we want to do is also provide the interface and the modeling for the end users uh, via the web browser and, and run everything in the cloud. So that is sort of the third leg of, of the investments that we're going to do, yeah. All right, Lars, simplifying all this complexity. Congratulations yeah, on getting that. version <laughs> seven you. out. And uh, thank you very much for coming on theCUBE. Great, thanks, nice uh, being here. Yeah, Keep it right you. there, everybody. We'll be back with our next guest right after this is theCUBE. We're live from Rapid Miner Wisdom 16 in New York City. Right back.